and welcome to Mad Old Goes Racing and today I'm looking at something a little different as you might be able to tell from what's on the screen at the moment that's a motorcycle well it's a very small motorcycle um, this is track day R it's uh, an early access title it's been out in early access since March of last year and the team behind it Mad Cow you should be able to just about see the little symbol for the Mad Cow underneath my ugly mug up the top right today um they have been trying to come out with monthly updates um they've hit their mark most of the time they have had one or two minor hiccups along the way but uh considering how much they've added content wise since it first came out they've been doing okay now uh let's have a look see what you get well you get a rider and you can set his or her Nickname, short name, and race number, and then uh, cancel that. Um, choice of bikes we'll go to in a minute, but we'll just have a look through the. Uh, come on, uh, the UI is interesting, should we say? Um, what I found is you, you at various points, be able to use your left stick on your controller and the A and B buttons to go in or out but uh, not always and not consistently so the UI needs some sorting gameplay wise lean smooth I'm not sure that really does a lot uh, smooth input I'm not sure that does a lot and front brake help which I've currently got off uh, does actually do something if I remember rightly video wise all you got in here is a choice of resolutions in a rather hugely weird layout and whether or not you've got V-Sync on which I have uh, audio opponent volume and menu music and that's it you cannot actually change the in-game volume at all and I've had to adjust this because what I normally have my volume on about 22 on the headphones I've had to turn down a three using the in-Windows in mixer because this thing's just too loud. So it needs a master volume control, please. Controller assignments, we'll get back to in a second. Uh, quality, you literally, this is your video quality. Low, medium, high or ultra. Please add some other options for individual bits and pieces. This thing's using Unity. Uh, and as such it shouldn't be beyond the scope of too much hard work to uh, give a load of additional options uh, credits for some reason seems to be credits to various potential people making stuff so don't know why I don't I'm, I'm assuming some of these circuits are actually genuine and real but controls right um you can hit that button and it will tell you you have a controller now they've recently changed this and um, it's an improvement on what it was there are a few weirdnesses in it but you can basically select along the top here what controller you're looking at and then assign keyboard mouse and controller I have tried this with a wheel it was uh, not good <laughs> It, it just felt like it was flopping about all over. Like I think I used 120 degrees of rotation, and it just felt like there was it just flip flop from place to place. And I, I could probably spend uh, more time trying it, but uh, ah, didn't bother. If you go to calibrate, this is one of those controls where the left stick actually does something. Unfortunately, the left stick, whilst you're trying to set it up, is also trying to move between buttons. So if you happen to move up here and try and just look at the things you end up moving other stuff whilst you're at it interesting because that's one of the few places where it actually does what you expect it to but you can set your controller up with a little bit of effort so just try not to set up your left stick whilst you're doing other things um so in that way it's quite limited on um UI options and settings, so it really needs a little bit of work in there. 
content wise we'll go uh, you can oh, look it's working again now um bike you have various classes uh oh look it's not working again um ycf these are basically like mini motard uh i won't bother going in and out and in and out because it's a pain in the bum two different engine sizes the Poloni, they are scooters with a uh, modern and a vintage classic type one. The Oval, which is what we are on, is like mini motor, um, mini bikes, or pocket bikes as they're sometimes called. Uh, again, just a range of engine sizes. Well, I'm assuming what the 110 through T12 are is the engine size. You can't see from my gloves in a way now. I'm not wearing my gloves. Bagger, this is. Get there a minute. I keep forgetting to press the button down here. Um, uh, slightly weird. Um, quite why you'd want what looks like a Harley Davidson with a load of panniers and ferret, weird half ferret. I don't know, but there was obviously somebody decided to put that in, and whatever. Six hundred. You've actually got a six seven five triple, which I presume is based on a Triumph. Uh, Three hundred. That's like uh, Super Sport 300 spec single or twin cylinder. I think that's based on the Yamaha, this particular one. The 1000cc is a choice of 1000cc four cylinder, which again is based on the presumably R1 Yamaha. 1200 Pro, which is based on something like Panigale uh, or the. Um, was it the Panagon? The Toy on a V Twin Decay. I can't remember. And then the GP Pro, which is uh, based on a current 1000cc Grand Prix machine, complete with wings and weird shit that allows you to make the suspension go up and down as you come in and out of corners for the whole shot device, front and rear, which I haven't bothered using because. Oh, I have enough trouble getting my thumbs to work, never mind all the other stuff. 500, I'll go back to that. That's basically an old uh, Lucky Strike Suzuki circa the time that uh, Young Master Schwantz was raiding it and winning a world title on it. So that thing is a bit of an animal. Um, what I'm going to do is go back to the Oval 212. Reason for that being, I like small bikes. So, um, what we're going to do is just go through what options you got. Right, you can do a race, you can do a track day, which is basically a practice session where you can do as many laps as you like within the limits of the time you've allotted yourself, which is a slightly bizarre way of doing things. Time attack, which is, as it says, basically a time trial, and you try to beat the time of a another person. And multiplayer, which uh, I'm not actually trying because every time I've been on there, there's been like one server and there's been nobody in it. So I went, okay, whatever. There's not a huge number of people playing this at the moment, um, but it it is okay as a as a bike racing title. Title. Um, if I go into probably the race, I want to be the easiest one to go into. Um, You've got karting circuits, three of, uh, Adria, get the map, um, which is quite a tight little one, the Messinio one, again, I'll try this one in a minute, it's got a reasonable flow to it, and for some reason you can't choose Jeepers, which is a bit like, uh, it's a kart track, why can't I choose that one for the race, but whatever, I th don't know why you can't choose that. But uh, race options, um, you can have with or without a qualifying session. They've set it so you've got four times of the day. Uh, all it does is change the lighting a bit, basically. Uh, number of laps up to 20, which is uh, probably if you fall off as often as I do, about 19 more than you really try to uh, do successfully. Uh, number of AI, I think that goes up to 10, 9, 9. So, you got a maximum of nine AI. AI strength, 
it goes up to 120, I can barely beat the bloody things on zero. That's how slow I am. Uh, automatic shift and show the racing line. I am not going to try race. I found the AI. Oh, shall I? Shall I do a two lap? Two lap? Oh, bugger it. I'll do a two lap race just for a laugh. I will probably get knocked arse over tit straight away. Not going to bother qualifying. Um, and be on my arse before I know it because you may notice the sound just got more. Ooh. More weird and noisy. Um, as I said, this thing is extremely loud. Whoops. Oops. Free trickle. Oh, nearly lost it. I don't know if you noticed, but the uh, the UI looks a bit sort of big on the left hand side. Oh. I think this is at the moment looking like the best result I've ever had in this game. I usually finish dead last because I fall off on at least one lap. Penalty is about. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the AI trying to ram me up the arse. This is what they do all the time. If you're sort of racing against them, you end up being battered and bruised. I've been knocked off more times than I care. I think. Usually, if I ever race and try and do anything sensible, uh, it's about four restarts before I actually get to the first or second corner without being knocked off. So the AI definitely needs a bit of work. Uh, I don't know if you can actually see this up there because my face is in the way again, but um, it's actually got penalty times for the laps and things. Whatever. So, as you notice, the, the first AI and went off like a clap of hell, and then there's a load of um, fair way back. The AI is very uh, broad spread of abilities, but the the fastest one, even on the lower setting, is just basically too damn quick. I need to sort of squeeze them up a bit and make them so they work a bit better across a, a broader range. Uh, oh, I don't know what the hell I like on 120. I never even bother. I think the most I've gone up to is 90. And they were just like, tried nine riders and they all just shot off and left me for dead. Well, they left me in the dirt the first time, but they left me for dead. Um, more fun if you like that sort of thing, is the track day. Um, basically the same thing. Again, this time you can select whatever circuit you like for some bizarre reason. Um, if I select that one just for the hell of it. Uh, race options. You actually have to set the duration of how long your track day R session is. Um, and for some reason it defaults to 10 minutes, which seems like a very strange choice, but whatever. Um, I've never turned on the show line, so I think I'll just turn it on, just have a laugh. Uh, I'll put it on for an hour. I'll put it in, ooh, I'll put it in the evening, just, just to change the mood of lighting a bit. And, uh, do a couple of laps without all the AI getting in my way. Or me getting in the way of the AI, one of the two. Um, I do find the info text is a little bit big and bold. But then I think everything about this UI-wise has been a bit big and bold. Um, 
one thing if you if you happen to be uh, on a 1610 screen as opposed to a 16.9 like my other screen is you find that some of the text comes out sort of on two lines because it gets scrolled around it's uh, the UI is not designed to run on a 1610 screen you can again uh, gotta go to like the you can set um, various things um, transmission ratios through changing your front and rear sprockets, how much fuel you got, suspension rates and damping rates. Um, only got bump and re uh, I don't think they've got fast and slow damping. I don't remember having seen fast and slow damping. Set what the tire warmers are set to, and you can change the geometry, basically the rake of the front end, and the swing and arm position, which is, I think that's height, um, and length. So, if you want a slightly more stable bike, you can obviously make the swing and arm a bit longer, or uh, reduce the rake, or increase it, depending upon what your view is. <laughs> world view is as far as what the angle means basically the bigger the angle is the more stable the bike should be um, but the slower turning so and I can't remember what the high and low swing arm position does but uh, all of this is based on various books uh, if I actually had a thought about it beforehand one of the books I use is actually one that I happen to own it's basically full of lots of formula on what what the bike dynamics do, but I'm not going to change anything. You can have a look at your times when you're back in the pits, and oh, it looks quite nice lighting wise, doesn't it? Um, oh, that's uh, the, the race line, which is interesting. So, presumably, it's telling you to go down a second for that, and then. That sun's a bit bright. Notice it just flashed up over rev risk as I changed down too early. As race lines go, it's quite an interesting uh, take on it. I don't think I've seen one quite like this before with uh, the big numbers which uh, show up quite nicely. And I have to say the lighting's actually not bad. I don't normally bother changing the uh, time of day. They, uh, one of the last updates they did was they added all the damage in, so is it me or did I see a stand pop up over there? Oh look, I've damaged the valves. Um, they added damage which I hadn't realised until some time after the event had actually included engine damage from over rev etc. So, you have to be a bit more careful how you change it down, otherwise you're going to kill your engine, which you don't want to do. As you can see, I'm taking no notice of the, the racing line, but there you go. And if you do change down too quickly, what happens is you will uh, break your engine. So, but it's got um, chassis damage. Uh, you can see when you drop it, the uh, damage to the fairing uh, seat, etc. And if you uh, throw it down the road hard enough, it will burst into flames, which is somewhat annoying. Um, if I uh, go to my pit box, does it actually restart the engine? It appears to have fixed the engine, which is. It also appears to be facing the wrong way, which is rather annoying because you can't rotate the camera and I'm not 
trying to work my brain round to go the other way. If I fall off, which I can do like that, uh, there's no instantly get back on your bike option. You have to press Y to stand up, uh, shake your head around a bit, face where you're going, go to your bike, press Y again, uh, use your stick to stand up, and then get on your bike, pressing Y, and then press Y again to actually start the thing. Now, that's fair enough if you don't happen to throw on your bike so it's landed 200 metres away because it takes you forever and a day to get to it which is a bit of a pain I do wish they would also change this so when you pause the thing it turns the sound off because that if you happen to pause whilst it's screaming along it can be a bit irritating now um, I think just for a laugh I'm going to see if I can get on the uh, on the leaderboard which is not very long for this particular circuit uh, oh I should actually go what well, the other circuits are first um, I don't know how many of these are real Cremona which is I'm assuming this is actually a genuine uh, track because it's got a in the credits Motor Arena is actually Masano Europa track I think is a made up one but again it might or it might not be Shark Bay is um, Phillip Island I forgot the name of the circuit there for a second uh, in Australia Italia Ring I think is a made up circuit it's it's quite a long circuit it's uh, good for sort of practicing because you get a nice flow from it once you get the hang of it TDR World Circuit, no idea if that's real or not, but that's uh, quite a tricky little bloody thing. Um, and Tashana is... Uh, press the right button again. Um, Magello. So you've got a couple of three genuine circuits that I know of. Uh, some of the other ones, not sure if they're genuine or not. We're going to go out to Misano, just try out... Uh, have a look at the leaderboards. Um, really? What bike are we on? Don't know if I can get anywhere near any of those. Was that the one I was looking at? I suspect I'm going to be a couple of seconds off that, but we'll give it a shot. Am I losing the plot here? Yep, you stick it on the green stuff, that's an invalid lap, so let's... Uh, pick your bike up, you silly sod. And of course, we're trying to start right against the fence, which is a pain, so... Let's try again. Oh, that was close. Uh, 
getting through treacle trying to get the game from side to side. And then it says you're the winner. Why? <laughs> Why do that? Why not let me just do bloody laps until I do the fastest I can do? What the hell was that? Run that past me again. <laughs> so, now I have to uh, go back to being bloody. If I hit continue, does it then tell me a new person to have a go at? It's like, why? I want to be able to do laps. So yeah, now it's saying I have to go against this person. Now, I don't know how it decides half a second or something faster. I do genuinely dislike uh, time trial things that do this. It's like, just let me do laps until I've got the hang of the bloody thing. Oh shit. And again, why? So yes, that's actually damned annoying. <laughs> I'm one of these people who likes to just slowly progress, not be bugging about and told, oh, you got to do that. So now it's saying I've got to go for the next person. I'm like, why? That's point two of a second difference. Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to go to track and then out of to track. Now, um, I uh, yeah, yeah. exit. Um, if you find uh, something with a few less people in it, presumably it will be. Uh, let's go time attack and. Go around motor arena and okay, it's got all these things up here, and then suddenly a bike you can change it down here. That's like, let's go for the 300. And I might have set a lap time already with this one. It's a leaderboard. Uh, have I not selected the track yet? Leaderboard. I have indeed set a lap. Should I try and beat my own lap? Because I'm pretty sure I can't beat that other lap. Or should I go to a different track? So let's go to the Italian ring and we'll do. A lap round that, shall we? On we shall I? Oh, what the hell. We'll get a Magello and we'll do it. We'll try and set a lap round here on the 300. It's... It's an interesting design choice to have this. I think, um... Cartcraft or something similar. Where you, you just about got in the swing, I think. You might have noticed a massive increase in noise level there. Um... Should we have a laugh and try it from a different viewpoint? Let's try it from an on bike view. Oh, oh god. At least see if I can show you what it looks like. My head will be getting all over the place here.
What was I saying? Uh, yeah, I think Cartcraft or something similar where it says, oh, you're up against so-and-so, and then you set a lap time and it pisses off and it's like, please don't do it. Just give me an option to go, right, I would like to um, just carry on. Wait till I've done my best possible lap and then... Uh, And this is where I have a problem because I can't actually see around the corner because I'm not looking up. I don't know if this has uh, track IR support at all. Oh, I forgot where I was on the track and ended up on the wrong side of the sodding circuit. That's now going to come up and go invalid. I thought I was here, not there. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, um, they have made one or two uh, interesting choices um, in terms of what they are or aren't doing. Um, I'm guessing when you've got basically a handful of people buying it in your game you can be fairly uh, choosy on what you do or don't fix but they have uh, basically come out with the we just want to make it accessible uh, but accurate so I mean if you compare this with, say uh, GP bikes it's been out basically as a beta for took in 10 years or more this is actually more rideable um, GP bikes has a horrible habit of uh, losing the front end when you go in from steady state to just start to open the throttle in their last couple of beaters and I'm not even sure if the race hope is even trying to fix it oh that's too wide oh and he's lost it big time now this is what I said about uh, you can end up three miles from your bloody bike and then run like an idiot, get on it. Go, go, pick it up you prat. Oh, I busted the screen. Because I'm not in third gear, it won't stop. Yeah, as I said, I can't even do a full back <laughs> from the onboard. It's going to be in Melbourne anyway, so... I don't know if that's any better. Let's restart. <clears throat> so at least we can see through the screen. Should I even ask what that's meant to be? because it looks like a penis. One thing you will find is that, depending upon the, the layout of the gears on the bike, you might have to go up a gear to get the first, or down a gear to get the first, which is slightly uh, interesting. All right, let's try the now this is the one where your rider moves your head about, so you're actually in the position of where the head is. So as you duck down, you duck down. As he breaks, you should shoot up and end up looking above the screen. Get your mark mark as motional as you hang a million miles off the side of the bike. Now let's try and remember to go to the right hand side of the circuit here as we. Uh, like I said, I don't normally use this view, but 
I think they'll be actually not doing too badly with it so far. Of course, not too bad is a right with term, and whoop, that felt like I was late to getting over. So is it um, changes your perception of where the apex is as you sort of move your head across and you've got no control over it, so it is a little bit bizarre. Mm -hmm. oh, I think that was too many gears to go down. If you touch the green or the red or whatever uh, on the side of the curve, you invalidate your lap, which is a massive pain in the arse. And my lap is currently invalid, so I thought I might actually make a whole lap without balls now from this position, so oh well. Ooh, that was interesting. I'll see if I can do a valid lap, just for the laugh. This particular bike really, 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 really sets off my tinnitus. <laughs> oh, bollocks. <laughs> uh, interesting. Well, uh, <coughs> I think we'll just restart rather than jumping on the bike. There is, of course, one thing with these leaderboards is it doesn't tell you whether or not somebody was using like front brake help or what. I don't know. I don't know if it actually makes a lot of difference. Uh, I should try turning it back on and seeing if it does stop me uh, dying on quite such a regular basis. I assume that is legal to run over there. Getting your head round where your bike is relative to where you are because you're following it does make hitting the apex a little bit more uh, interesting. It always takes me a few laps to get my head round where I am. <laughs> Could definitely give it a bit more feeling on what the front end's doing at times. Shut off there, avoid the going over the back of the curb and then invalidating my lap again. You might notice I never touch a back brake, um, that's because I just find it a pain in the arse to use. I've actually got it assigned to a button, so I did actually try. Um, Signing it to the uh, brake on the Fanatec pedals. It didn't want to use the brake. I could use the clutch and I could use the throttle, but not the brake. For some reason, it didn't register it. Which was a 
bit of a pine, but there you go. And it didn't help. <laughs> didn't make using the back brake any easier, so. Felito, yes. Like I said, um, that just annoys me. Like so much in life recently, but there you go. So yes, um, what do I think? It's got potential. This is what's so annoying about the niggly little problems. Um, if they can make the AI so they're a bit less likely to uh, just take you out. Um, yeah, I tried uh, a race the other day at um, Phillip Island and I literally got round up the arse going in the first corner three laps in a row or three attempts in a row and just went no, sort it uh, turned the AI down I think I got down to 40 and went this is just getting ridiculous I can't actually get anywhere near the damn things even at sort of 40 for the race at a pace but uh, in terms of content, it is moddable, uh, so you can create your own bikes, add them, tracks as well, apparently. Um, I haven't bothered with any of the mods, but uh, like I said, it's it's got loads of potential, and if, if they get it right, if they get rid of all the niggly shit, I think they'll have a winner on their hands. They then need more people to start playing it, really. Um, if if you do get it, uh, I can't remember how much it is. It's about twenty quid, I think, on early access, which is for a very small team. I think it's something like three or four people doing this. Not too bad. Uh, I don't think they're do doing it to make the money. I think they're doing it just for the love of doing um, a motorcycle racing game. So maybe support them, give it a shot. Maybe um, your money, your choice, as they say. Um, but I've had it for nine months. I break it out occasionally, have another go at it and go, yes, yeah, improved, or it's got worse, depending upon what they've done with the physics, uh, a couple of times they've actually got it, so it, it's got a little worse, um, which, when you talk about motorcycle dynamics, is not a surprise, but um, it has loads of potential, they just need to polish it a bit, I think. AI, like I said, needs... Um, Bring it together so they have less field spread because uh, if you get like one rider who just fucks off at the head of the field and then it doesn't seem no matter what what uh, you set it to, there's one rider who just fucks off and leaves everything else for dead, which is a strange one. Um, but if you want to see somebody who can ride these things at a reasonable rate, go and look up Girl Racer Tracy on uh, YouTube. She is. A bit of a bike nut, and um, if you noticed, there was uh, one of the riders in a pink outfit. I think that's uh, a tribute to her in game. So, mm. like I said, give it a shot if you want. Um, it has potential. The bikes are quite fun. They're all very different to ride. The mini bikes are actually quite good fun. Um, and if you try out the really fast stuff, I mean, I'll have a quick. Should we? Yeah. What the hell? We'll. Uh, just go to oh, Masano with oh, the 500 machine, which at least is quiet, at Masano, and if we go for an hour, about an hour, um, oh, what, I thought I said I'd do, 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 do the track day. Am I going mad? Well, uh, did I select track day? I thought I selected track day. Not time attack. Crap sakes. No. Exit. Track day. Track day. Let's just go into the options and turn on the front brake help. Just track day. One hour. Yeah. Uh. 
I have to say, uh, given the choice between playing this with the slight annoyances that it's got, at least it's early access, so it's allowed to have a few. Something like uh, the uh, NASCAR 21 or whatever it was called, Infinity uh, or Ignition. Had no excuse. I'll just run wide because I wasn't going to stop. If you can keep the front wheel on the ground, it'd be really useful. Ooh, scream it, scream its head off. Be interesting to see what it says if you over river two straight. As it said valve valve damage was it for the four stroke? I believe the front brake help helps a lot. Not that much. <laughs> right. Oop. Where's me bloke? I can't see him. Come on, everyone might can see me bite you think there well, where to put it? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Not close enough. Try again. Pick it up. I have chassis damage, so now I can't actually turn right. <laughs> Which is um, interesting. <laughs> I crashed a bike three times in one year, uh, quite heavily. And at the end of the year, I actually took it to Harris Brothers and it was actually um, uh, was it Leicester I think one of the Harris Brothers and I was actually took my chassis and um, straightened it out for me and it didn't do that <laughs> even though it was bent um, so yes oh, I didn't mean to exit I meant to actually go back in but yeah an interesting one that um, I think, yeah, the uh, the front brake help does actually make it so you're less likely to throw up down the road, but that thing is, obviously, you're talking 175-plus brake horsepower, 500cc, 130 kilos. That's a lot of power-to-weight ratio. In that, yeah. What is a fairly uh, aggressive engine, so, yeah, leave that one till last. Even the uh, the modern 1000cc Grand Prix machine, small dose hold on it, and a lot easier to ride. But uh, all in, um, a fun little tile, uh, it's got potential, it's got enough to keep you going, even if you don't race, you can do lots of time attacks, track days, have fun, 
So, uh, worth a couple of quid of your time and effort. And uh, hopefully, I get rid of some of the niggly bits in the near future and um, we'll see how it goes. I might re review it later and uh, see how it's getting on. But for now, that's uh, all for me. And uh, enjoy racing. I'll see you soon and goodbye.